This is truly, truly my favorite time of the year, right? Yeah. Why? But I mean, why is it our favorite time of the year? Because it's Jesus' birthday, right? The whole reason we come, Jesus, right? So, but what else? It's time with your family. I'm going as soon as I get out of here today. We got to go to do Christmas with Tiff's family, right? Woo-hoo. So we're excited right now. Go see my family. I haven't seen all Have year. Fun. Have fun. See some cousins and hang out. Let them. Tell me how bad Georgia football is, and I'm going to hear it the whole the whole day. So, but what else is it? What what else reminds you of Christmas? Hmm? Is it uh, gingerbread houses, decorations, hot chocolate, Christmas tree? But it's the smells that really remind me of Christmas. When I walk into the house, yeah, I don't know if y'all. There's pine cones now that smell like what? Cinnamon. Yeah. We got them, right? So when you walk in the house, there's always a pine cone that's smelling like cinnamon. There's always, what else? That That is true. That is a fact. I mean, it wouldn't be Christmas without Hallmark movies. That's true. Go. Does mistletoe really smell? I've never smelled one. What do you say, mistletoe? Every time, I, every time I get Miss Tip under mistletoe, she does this. <laughs> she dabs me out. Candy cane. Yes, that's it. That smells wonderful. What'd you say? Cookies. Yeah. What else? The frosted cranberry candles. It's the only time my mom used. I mean, it. that is very specific scent you're talking. It's her favorite. Frosted scent. cranberry cran candles. Cranberry That's hard to say. Frosted cranberry candles. Yes. Yes. Bath and Body Works had their sale for candles yesterday. Yes. Everybody yes. 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 Oh, 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 Presents. Does presents smell? They smell like wrapping paper. All right, but you know what? Um, we'll get back to that. We'll get back to that. All right, so. But what's my favorite? Come here. What's your favorite? Come here. Come here. So, come here. So, what's your favorite Christmas cookie? The kind you eat, okay. But is there a specific flavor? Which one that smells the best? So, when I got home last night, my dad had made, now my dad, I love it. He's a little different. He's a baker, all right? He loves baking. He likes trying new things. He made all these gingerbread cookies. Have you ever had gingerbread cookies? Like homemade ones? So I walked in the house last night, he left us a plate of them. Not that I needed them, but he did it for me, right? So I just love the smell, right? Right? I love the smell. I love the chocolate chip cookies. What other kind of cookies? Santa's cookies. Aren't those just chocolate chips? Go ahead. Huh? Aren't those just chocolate chips? No, Santa's cookies are not chocolate chips. What are they? They're chocolate chips. No. Sugar cookies. Sugar cookies, Santa's cookies. That's how we make it. Sugar cookies with the Hershey Kisses. With the Hershey Kisses? All right, so anyway, I said all this to say that. I'm going to need a couple of volunteers because I love playing this cookie game, right? So let me see. Coach, as you volunteer, come up. You can come play. Come on. All right, come here. Let's see. We're going to need to do boys versus girls because that's the way I like to dominate the girls. Oh, what? Oh, what? Oh, okay. Millie, come on. Hey everybody, this is Millie. <laughs> everybody say, hey Millie. One, two, three. Hey, All right. Let's see. I'm going to need another boy. Cole, come stand right here. Yep, come on. Yeah. Right here. All right, good. I'm going to need two more girls. Let's go one more boy. We'll go three boys. If you tell me who to pick, I'm not picking him. I promise you. That's yeah. how I roll. Benji. Benji. No Benji. Come on. Come on. Benji. 
Remember that last week? Is that what we talked about? I, I'm asking you all. I don't think that's what we talked about. No. That was the week before. Come on, guys. You guys I'm are honest. failing your listening. I didn't oh, Listening comprehension. Hold on. Is it something with David? I don't know. You tell me. Is it something with David? Yes, sir. No one remembers. Nobody remembers? Is it about Christmas? Was it about Christmas last week? No. Oh, it was about like that. Julie! Didn't we have like, didn't we go through? Well, this is called last week. Didn't we go through all the... Isaac spoke last week. You spoke to me before. Isaac spoke. I spoke to you. Isaac spoke. Isaac spoke. Isaac spoke. Isaac spoke. I, Jalissa was two weeks ago. She did. Stand on line, stand. Isaac, that's right. Wasn't it like all of Julie. the prophets in like a row? Here we go. Now that's what we learned some. about an altar. So it's the only reason that I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I wasn't in here. Yeah, so um, go ahead, Gracie. What are we talking about? We were talking about all the prophets in order. Yes. Ooh. There we go. Well, you guys failed last week's quiz, so good job. We're going to have to write lines later. I'm going to tell Isaac. He's going to be crazy. Isaac's going to be upset. Um, but before we get into this week's message, who started the game with your family? The Christmas game that we handed out last week. This Christmas game, Family Christmas Challenge. Hey, before you leave today, pick one of these up. All right? It's super fun. We've done one, two, three, four, five. I did put my, uh, I did say we were going to win, so good luck to everyone else. But like, there's fun stuff you can do all together, like discover new Christmas music. You can pull out your sleeping bags and have a family slumber party by the tree. You can snuggle up on the couch and watch a Christmas movie with your fam. That's fun. We watched the new movie uh, Klaus on Netflix. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. It's like a, it's like a Santa Claus story. Uh, you can eat dinner together at the table. We do that every night, or we try to. Bake cookies and share them with friends. That's fun. We just had a cookie game. What did you share with friends? If you didn't share with friends, you can give yourself a half check because you baked the cookies. All right, you can go on a walk. Tucker and his wife, they walk their dog. Boom. Check. Checked. You checked that one off the list. All right, here's some kid ones you can do. Clean your room without being asked. Whoa. 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 I don't know about that. What? The hardest one is trying not to fight with your sister. Is that on here? Uh-huh. No, it's electronic. Go all day without fighting with your brothers and sisters. Oh, man. I, I would give my son $100 a year to do that. Uh, what about a whole day without screens? That's a tough one, too. Without screens. A whole day without screens. And the last one, a whole day without sugary snacks or drinks. And drinks. I All right, so if you didn't get one of these last week, pick one up, and I guess the game ends probably the Sunday before Christmas would be my guess. January 5th. Oh, January 5th, so you have through Christmas. Man, look at that. Haley's paying attention to this at least, not the lesson. I'm a stressful week. It's tough, it's a tough week out there. Well, my week was great. I was in New York City last week. I went to San Wow. It was super awesome. New York City. I did not meet Spider-Man. He wasn't there. He's not shooting any movies right now. Alex, Spider-Man. Spider-Man is totally real. He lives in Manhattan. I've seen him. Yeah, Spider-Man's not real. The Spider-Man I know is in Manhattan. New York City is really cool. Like Christmas, all, everything is super decorated. It was pretty. Uh, the lights were, we went to the top of the Empire State Building. Look at my phone. I took a bunch of pictures. We went to the top of the Empire State Building. Saw the city. And we went to the uh, Museum of Natural History where the Night of the Museum was shot. You guys know that movie? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I just thought that movie. Sharknado? Yeah. Uh, I, I, that's critically acclaimed. I've never seen it, though. I've never seen Sharknado. Um, yeah, a lot of movies are shot in New York City, right? There was a, inside the Empire State Building, they had like all the different movies, and they had one thing. A room you could walk in and King Kong's hands were coming through the windows and you could take the picture getting grabbed by King Kong's hand. It's kind of cool. Kind of neat. So um, if you ever get the chance to go to New York City, do it. Because it was totally, totally worth it. Um, it was really fun. We took our five-year-old Samuel. I don't know if you know my little little red-headed son. 
he likes to come in here and play the games because that's about all the screen time he gets because we're screen time. Uh, we don't like we don't like screens at our house. Oh. These kids get addicted to them. So do so do parents. All right. So um, let me ask you a question about let's let's have a little fun here at first. How many of you guys can do some fun impossible things like lick your elbow? Can anyone lick their elbow? If you can lick their, your elbow, get up here and show me. Show me. Get up here. If you can lick it, come on up. Can anyone lick their elbow? I heard a yes. Who did it? Come here, Levi. Show us. Come on, man. You're thinking outside of the box. Damon did it. Boom. That's good. I like it. All right. No, nobody can do that one. Okay, who can, um, apparently this can be done, who can talk while breathing through your mouth? Try it. Try it. Can anyone do that? Yeah. If you can do it, come up, y'all. Come up. Come here. Come up here. Well, come here, Carson. <laughs> that sounded like just a big inhale. Well, I mean, I guess that's pretty good. Apparently, one percent of the population can do that, and uh, and most of those people that can't do it, can you do it? That's pretty good. Our musicians, they're your singers. I didn't know. I didn't know that. All right, who can touch their tongue to their chin? To their chin. Ooh. Hey, we have a winner. All right. I heard Jeremy say he touch his tongue to his nose. Is that correct? Yeah. What is that? What did you say? You can do your nose too? Hey, it's a great way to clean out your nose. Great way to clean out. All right, the last one might be pretty easy. Who can kick their own butt? Let me see it. Let me see a butt kick. Hey, all right. There we go. Let's see it. What, what is that, Carson? That's the craziest. You gotta kick backwards. There you go. Now, now everyone's gonna start nervous twitching. Hey, what'd you learn at church this morning? This is gonna be your one takeaway. This morning. Mom, yeah, we learned how to kick our own butts in church. Yeah, remember that. So when we ask next week, you'll be like, yeah, I remember we learned how to kick our own butts. Woo! All right. I just lost it, Tucker. I'm fired. Oh, man. All right. Serious question time. What, who in here has ever felt uh, like something is impossible? Like you've been asked with an impossible situation and then maybe you couldn't see the light on the other end. Let me hear let me hear a couple. What's yours, Millie? Impossible when my hair is naughty, I cannot brush it. It's Brushing out your impo your hair, tangled hair? JJ? Cleaning my room. What? Cleaning my room. That's that's tough. Cleaning room for my kids is tough. What you got, Bench? Yeah, putting up your clothes? Scary. Tucker, what's yours? Scary. Having to play a lock-in for 200 Oh, having to play a lock-in. That was a crazy oh, night. But you pulled it off, right? You guys pulled it off in epic fashion. What's yours, hud? Doing hard schoolwork. That's a good one. That's what they, what's yours, Jojo? Jojo, that's nothing. All right, one more. Tyler. Trying to get your little brother to pay attention. Yeah, we struggle with that with Samuel at home, too. So, um, when you are faced with those impossible themes, what's, uh, so the theme of the month is finding joy, right? Kind of, in a way, finding joy. Joy, finding a way to be happy even when things don't go your way. So in those impossible moments, what are some ways that you can find joy? Or things don't go as you expect them to go, what are some ways you can find joy? Like Georgia fans? 
Of course, of course, I don't know why you guys thought you had a shot against LSU, but that's okay. Yeah, who's number 16 in the country? What do you want? Uh, 17. What do you want from us? Country? Who wants to team? I can talk about Georgia because Oklahoma gets the job done and Georgia doesn't. <laughs> All right, so what? What are some ways? Help me out. You can find joy when things don't go as expected, or when you're faced with a really hard homework. What are some ways that you can find joy? What you got, Isabel? What's that? Uh, one more time, I can hear you. Do what makes you happy. What's yours, Haley? Yeah. After you feel better about it. What you got, Damon? Playing video games? Um, maybe. I don't know if you can find joy. What you got, Hunter, in the back? Ask for help? That's practical. You're about to say that? Hey, when brothers think on the same level, that's pretty cool. I have a twin brother. We do that a lot. Because we're twins. We like mental connection. I have a twin brother. That's right. I'll show you a picture after, after service. You don't look like twins. I'm much better looking. Um, one but more. One more. Thanks, sir. You got one more? Ways you can find joy, right? When your team's losing, you can say, "Man, at least you know, at least uh, it's fun to watch. I get the privilege to watch football or soccer or whatever your sport is." What you got, Chase? Music. You listen to some music. That helps people get through it. Jojo, what you got? Nothing. Okay. We'll keep. We'll keep going back to you, Jojo. All right. Well, we're we're gonna look. In the Bible uh, today, the story of um, Zechariah and Elizabeth. Who knows this story? Besides Tucker, Bible student over there. We read this. All right, you guys know this one. All right, we're gonna we're gonna listen. We're gonna pay attention. It's good. Okay. So, who was Zechariah? Somebody help me out. Jojo. No, come back to Jojo. Okay. Tyler, who was Zechariah? He was a prophet. And who was his wife? What's her name? Okay. Were these like were they like the young hip, hip couple? No. no. They were no. old. Oh, they were old. They were old. Hip With couple. hip problems. With hip problems. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> All right. So Zechariah was a priest in the temple. What did what did a priest do? Uh, back in the in the New Testament. Preached. What up, Jojo? He taught? Yes, good job. What else? Anything else? They would pray for people. Tucker? They burned incense. Why did they burn incense? So you smell good in there? Sacrifice. Ah, that's why. That's why. Okay. All right. So um, we're going to call Zechariah Z. I'm going to just give him that for, for short because it's a little easier for me to say. Um, anyways, they were an older couple. And they never had kids their entire lives. They wanted children, they just never asked God about it or went to uh, pray about it. And so um, let's read. Somebody read. Is this Luke one eleven up there? It is. Throw that up there, Hunter. Go ahead, Haley. Is there an angel of the Lord appeared to Zachariah? The angel was standing at the right side of the altar. Luke one eleven. Thank you. So he was burning incense, right? And this was something special that uh, the priests didn't always get to do. They had to be chosen for this. So, let's read. Let's continue to read. One, yeah, 113 through 17. Yeah, all right. This is a long. This is a few verses. Go ahead, Billy. Listen up. Thank you. Tucker appreciates it too. Who who knows uh, which John this was? Well, who was it, Hank? What did John the Baptist do? What's he significant for? Somebody hadn't gone yet. Ellie, Ellie you're about to shout out. Uh, John the Baptist baptized Jesus. He baptized Jesus and he got he prepared the way. It says it in here. He prepared the way for the Lord. Why is that significant? 
What does that what is that why does that matter for us and for salvation? Anybody? What you got, Taylor? That's good. That's really good. So so here we have this old couple, right? They're old, and it says in the Bible that they were elderly. They were old. They were not young. They were old. And in my notes it says they were really old or something like that. It's kind of funny. Anyways, um, so Zechariah is chosen to go, or Zeke is chosen to go burn the incense at the altar to make this journey. And while he's there, he's praying to the Lord for something. Um, and the angel appears to him and says, you're going to have a kid. Okay, let's rewind for a second. Parents in here, we're, we're, uh, we're young and hip parents. We're cool. We're not old like these guys. When we had our first kids, how freaked out were we? And we were pretty young, right? Right. Well, can you imagine if you are, let's just say they're 80. I don't know how old they were. We don't know. And, and you're told you're gonna you're gonna have a kid. That'd be pretty. That'd be that'd scare me. If I was 80, it's gonna have a kid because I wouldn't know how I was gonna take care of him or her. And that would be super scary. So um, let's read Luke 1:18 and see what happens next. Who wants to read? Who hasn't read yet? Did you read already, Hannah? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. There you go. He even admits to his old age, right? He he questions this prayer that's been answered. Who who's who's never done that? Who's never questioned a prayer, right, or something that you didn't ask? Yeah, we've all kind of questioned it. We all had doubt. That's okay. It's okay to ask questions and be doubtful as long as um, you can still go to God about it and talk to Him. So. Um, because he questioned God, though, he got into a little bit of trouble. I don't know if it's really trouble, but we can continue to read to find out what happened because of his doubt. I got two more verses. Who wants to read them? Besides Haley and Lily. No, Tyler, no. we haven't gone yet. Go ahead, Tyler. Looks at Tucker too. A little side eye. A little side eye in IRV there. We got more verses, don't worry. There's a lot of scripture in this. So the angel Gabriel comes to Zachariah and says, You know what? Because you doubted me, I'm gonna shut your mouth. During the whole time of this pregnancy, how long is somebody pregnant? Does anybody know? Nine nine. How, that's a lot, that's a long time to be able to be silent, right? And what just let's uh, put ourselves in Elizabeth's shoes for a minute. He goes away on this holy journey, right? His prayer gets answered. He doubts God's plan for him. His mouth gets shut. And when he comes home, right, Elizabeth's probably happy to see him, right? Just away on vacation. He comes home, and he can't say a word. What would your reaction be? Are you ignoring me? Oh, that's good. Are you ignoring me? <laughs> Billy? <laughs> Come talk, you lazy fool. That's the Carson translation. That's the CRV. All right, what's your... Uh, thanks, Tucker. Yeah. So, Jojo! No, nothing. Okay. So, uh, on a side, side note, my son Gabriel, that's who we named him after, the angel Gabriel. But he probably didn't know that, Tucker, did you? Now you do. So, he gets silent. And he cannot speak until after his son is born. They will come true when the time is right. All right. So, um, what do you think? Does it say in there, or was the verse before they named the baby John? What's the John mean? Who knows what John means? Definition of John. Anybody? I think it was in the last verse. Something light of the world or something like that? No? No? Okay. Alright, so John, he was named John. Um, or was going to be named John. Oh, I don't have the whiteboard that Corey is supposed to give me. Oh, well. Next service, come back. Thanks for listening. Okay, so let's continue on. There should be. 
So after John is born, what happens? Who can tell what happens? Is it right away? No. He gives his speech back? Why? Why does he get his speech back? Yeah, so the promise that God told Zeke was that John would be born, and after that, because he was faithful, he would get his voice back. And he kept his word, right? That he was true to his word. So he gets his voice back, the Lord kept his promise, and John the Baptist helped prepare the way for Christ, right? He baptized him. What else did he do before he baptized him? Before he even met Christ, what are some things that John the Baptist did? And he locust. Didn't he eat locusts? Yes. Yeah, I thought so. Has anyone ever eaten a picket a locust before? I have. In here, in Fort That's right. I remember that. That was in the chicken farm, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah, I remember that game. Oh. It was like it was like buttermilk ranch flavor or something. Yeah. You can get them on Amazon. It's a true story. It's they're not good. You might like them because you're from Texas and you Texans are. I'm just kidding. Jojo, what you got? Nothing? Okay. So, um, so John the Baptist, he preached, right? He preached what Jesus was going to preach before Jesus got here to help prepare the way for Christ, um, which is big. So this goes back to our big kind of application, um, ways to find joy when things seem impossible. So Zechariah and Elizabeth thought that having a baby was impossible. They pray about it. Their prayer gets answered. He still has doubt. Okay, they end up having their child, who is John the Baptist, who prepares the way for Christ, which is the savior of our world, and um, and which is why we celebrate Christmas. Right, not all the gifts and everything. That's fun and that's neat, but the real reason we celebrate Christmas is because Jesus Christ was born. And um, so, without that happening, without this John the Baptist being born, um, yes, Jesus probably would have still been born, but. Who knows what would happen with the story of John the Baptist if he wouldn't have been born? So um, they showed up. God showed up for Zechariah and Elizabeth because um, He showed them that nothing is impossible through God. Has anyone experienced that before? When you have gone through a situation that, um, and if you don't want to answer it now, you don't have to. You can talk about it in your small group in a little bit. But there are there are some impossible situations, like maybe you lose a loved one. Right, when uh, somebody dies in your family, that's tough. That's really hard uh, to deal with. Or you have to move. Uh, when I was your age, when I was going into sixth grade, I moved from Oklahoma to Georgia. Um, not not cool. Uh, we did not want to do that at all. Me and we, me, my brother and sister. Um, that that seemed impossible. And I didn't have Christ at the time in my heart, so it was really hard to make it through that. Um, or um, so when maybe your parent loses a job or something like that, that's tough. Those are those are tough things. There are families at Christmas. This is a tough time of year for a lot of families um, because they feel like that they have to provide for their kids material things. They feel like they have to buy gifts because that's how they make people happy. Um, when true happiness is not found that way, it's it's found through Christ. So let's remember that as we um, as we go through this Christmas season. Right, it's not all about the the fun toys and games that we um, will most likely get, but it's about Christ and uh, what he did for us when he was born on Christmas Day. So there's a there's a key question um, I want you guys to think about after music time. Who's doing worship? Is that what you're doing? Or Melissa? Is there one of you? Who's doing worship? Is that, is that you? Okay. Um, so think about this question after we do worship, when we go in a small group, and we'll ask it again. Is this slide up there? Hunter, you got the key question slide? Should be on the bottom right, somewhere down there. Hey, there we go. What's the most amazing thing you have seen, you've ever seen? So think about that um, when we get into small groups after worship here. All right, you ready, Zeb? Okay, we're going to sing a Christmas song because it's that time of year. And then we're going to do our communion and uh, have fun.